It's Tuesday, November 10th, and you're listening to the Geek News Central Podcast, sponsored by GoDaddy.com. Geek News Central is a primer of the tech podcast net network. <laughs> hey folks, a little uh, shaky start tonight. Uh, computers are not cooperating. Stream is not cooperating. But yes, I'm here. And you know what that means. Strap in. Here it comes. All right, people, I need a go, no go for the Geek News Central podcast. Digital archive recorders. We're go flight. Microphone. We're go flight. Video feed. Go. Web browser. Go. RSS data stream aggregator. Go flight. Interflux totism suppressor. All right, I'm confused. Host readiness check. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. The Geek News Central podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to go. Q Todd in five. Button, button, who's got the button? Four. There is no cause for alarm. Three. Everybody hold on to something. Two. Just press the button. One. It's showtime. Aloha and welcome to the Geek News Central podcast, coming to you as live as it can be from the beautiful state of Hawaii via the Geek News Central studio overlooking greater Oahu. Hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome to the show. My name is Todd Cockburn. Of course, I want to encourage you to get over to geeknewscentral.com. Check out all the great content over there. Of course, check out the archive podcast available via the podcast link on the website. You can sign up for our newsletter so you get the show notes delivered directly to your inbox immediately following the show. The newsletter contains everything that I'm going to talk about during the show and all the listener submitted articles. Tonight, there's going to be a bonus, a bonus uh, link in the show notes. You'll only get that link in the show notes and uh, because what I'm going to show you is Google Street View of the uh, Hacienda here in uh, Honolulu. Uh, Google announced today that uh, Hawaii has been added to uh, the Street View view. <laughs> so uh, those of you that uh, are subscribed to the newsletter, you guys can uh, get a little look of the outside of the proverbial studios here uh, overlooking Greater Oahu and uh, have this uh, available up, of course, in tonight's show notes. So get signed up for the newsletter. And uh, you'll get that extra info. Of course, I want to welcome all the Ohana to the show. Hey, thanks for uh, coming and hanging out. And for those of you that are uh, with me on Ustream, hey, thank you very much for, for coming and hanging out with us tonight on, on that, uh, that channel as well. Of course, I want to welcome new listeners to the show. Hey, this show is created twice a week. I record every Monday and Thursday night for a Tuesday and Friday morning release here in Honolulu. So it's usually in your uh, basically ready to be downloaded about 4 o'clock in the morning Eastern Standard Time. So uh, make sure that you have your podcatcher set up to uh, download the show and get it uh, basically delivered automatically. So you, you get all the great geekness here that uh, I produce at the Geekness Central Podcast. Of course, I want to welcome listeners from 160 countries worldwide and uh, remind everyone to uh, take the big survey. This is the last week. Last week of the big survey, and uh, all the podcasters at Tech Podcast, Blueberry, Raw Voice, they all know that uh, this is the last week. This is a big push. If you haven't take, uh, done the newsletter yet, make sure that you do so. Uh, the response has been uh, pretty amazing, so we're going to have great results to share with the podcasters on the team that actually ran a survey as well. So look forward to uh, getting the results of that, and basically we'll share that with you guys too, okay? I want to give a big, big, big Big, and I can't say this enough, big thank you uh, to all of the listeners of the show that reviewed uh, the category uh, entries for the podcast awards. It was a big job, and I estimated three hours really to do a category, and it turns out some of you worked four or five hours on an individual category. I really appreciate the hard work. Um, I understand there was a, you know we had a few reviewers that ran into conflicts. There was a death in the family. Uh, another individual had trouble opening up an Excel spreadsheet because they were on a Mac. They didn't they weren't using Office. And I, I understand we you know there's always a little bit of adjustment we have to make each year. But we made the announcement or I made the announcement uh, Saturday afternoon of all of the shows that have made the uh, 2009 a slate. I'm very pleased with the slate. Now, those of you that are reviewers, you will notice that there are some categories. You're going to say, hey, Todd, that show is like number 13 or number 14 on the list. And what we've done is we had to join since we had uh, reviewers looking at each category. There are two reviewers looking at each category. We had to join the categories from those uh, both reviewers, racking them, stacking them that way. 
And then what we had to do was there was some shows that were nominated in as many as five categories that made the top 20. So we had to remove, basically pick the best category. And the way we did that was by the number of votes. So let's say a show got uh, 5,000 votes in the tech category but got 10,000 uh, uh, nominations in the uh, video category. That's the category we stuck them in if it fit. So um, there is a bit, a little bit of an adjustment there, and I think you'll see is if you look at the categories that you reviewed and look at your master list, you'll see that there's been a little shuffling there in a few of those. Uh, but we definitely appreciate your reviewing, and it's boy, it's, it's a process. Once we get your paperwork back, when I send it off to the accounting firm, and they send me this list back, and it's got all these metrics, and and it's kind of cool how they do it. But uh, in the end, basically, they certify the list. And uh, I basically sign off, and then we, we post the uh, post the results. So uh, voting is going to start on the 13th of November. We're going to run voting a little longer because of Thanksgiving approaching. And we're going to run through the Thanksgiving holiday all the way to the 30th of November. So folks will get a few extra days to vote. So if you're one of the shows that made the list, make sure you get your audiences prepped because they can vote every day starting on the 13th. We're still looking for a few more sponsors. We're a little bit short on the amount of money we have to raise. Uh, my goal every year is to raise about $4,500. And the reason for that is is the trophies uh, make up probably $3,700, $3,800 of that. Plus, I have fixed expenses for the server, fixed expense for the auditing firm, uh, the programmer that takes care of the site and everything. So um, hopefully we can get a few more sponsors over there. And that's you're knocking on wood here. Or we're going to have to look at the basically the the uh, the prizes that we're going to be giving out and whether or not we can support all those. So, um, great way to get some exposure for your business or for your podcast uh, by becoming a sponsor. And uh, look forward to if anyone wants to come over there and sponsor a uh, basically a 120 by 120 pixeled advertisement on the website. Great way to get some great exposure starting here from the 13th to the end of the month because there will be literally millions of page views uh, during that time frame. Um, what else we got going on here? Uh, I'm looking. Here's something I'm looking for, folks, and I'm putting a call to action out. We're Andy McCaskey and I and, and Jeffrey uh, Powers from uh, Geekzine Podcast uh, met after our roundtable this past Saturday. Talk about CES a little bit, working on some of the logistics. We're actually looking like we may have maybe two or three team members that are going to join us from TPN that came into the mailing list today. Um, so we got our fingers crossed on that. We may end up with a pretty big team in Vegas this year. And I'm, you got to thinking about that today. And I'm going to need video editors. Um, one of the biggest challenges that we have is after every CES is we have 120, 130 videos that all need to be edited, dropped into our template, show notes written, basically the full write-ups. So I'm looking for some video editors in which I can FedEx at the completion of each day's worth of shooting, a drive that will contain essentially all the uh, HD video that we've shot that day. We're going to be shooting exclusively um, in uh, uh, in .mov format and HD, so we need folks that can handle that format either in uh, Final Cut Pro or another uh, application that's out there that they may use. We'll provide all the templating and stuff, so that all you have to really do is cut and paste and get the you know get get the placement right. And then also we'll be looking for you to, uh, on a schedule, be putting those videos up um, on a variety of websites and also over at uh, blip.tv or maybe even TubeMogul, depending on if we work the deal with them to get the distribution down this year. So I'm looking at least maybe four or five video editors um, for really a quick turnaround after the end of the show. We want to get these videos out and online and on a published schedule so if you are in the market and you are able to spend some time uh, starting the week of January the 5th 2010 to put some time in for us let us know uh, pay you for your time and um, we'll uh, get you up and get you going uh, but again I'm looking for I think five video editors and probably each editor will probably end up with about 25 videos uh, which is really quite a bit of work and um, so let me know, okay? And uh, you can email me at geeknews at uh, gmail.com. If you don't, if those of you can't see in the show, but tonight I am not messing uh, like I have. Of course, those of you on the audio, listen to audio, you guys don't know, but I've had a boom 
here in the office for the last uh, two years that really has given me some trouble uh, recently. And it's basically, it's not held my microphone in the position that I, and I was always twiddling with it during the show and adjusting it and making sure it was right. Um, I bought a boom from Heil. It's their, it's a P, they call it the PL2T. And I've got my blue mic hanging on it. And so far, this thing's doing okay. We'll know in six months after I've, uh, you know, it's been sitting out here and hanging on the springs, whether or not it, uh, how well it works. But uh, I got a new boom, and uh, that should uh, keep the distractions down for me up here, reaching and playing with this a lot. So I'm um, pretty happy with that. Got that installed uh, yesterday. Hey, one thing that I wanted to bring up is um, on a family matter. Is Saturday, my daughter and I attended what they call their CAP uh, Rewards uh, Banquet. My daughter started the Civil Air Patrol. It's kind of like a, a RO, mini ROTC for air. It's basically in the Air Force line. Of course, for some reason here in Hawaii, they don't have a big Navy ROTC uh, program, but uh, which is weird because it's so much uh, huge Navy presence. But uh, she's uh, been participating in this program called CAP. And uh, it's been you know, pretty good. It's a nice little structured progress. They learn about aviation. Uh, she's got an interest in going into that field. So um, even if she decides to go to college and be a, you know, a pilot or whatever she may decide to do when she gets ready to graduate high school, um, this will kind of have set her up a little bit. And uh, so we went to the dinner. And uh, very interesting. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Silva Air Patrol, but uh, it's really kind of my first big exposure to it and I was pretty astounded they have like 500 aircraft nationwide they uh, participate in uh, drug interdiction with uh, Homeland Security they do um, search and rescue they provide emergency services and I, I was pretty astounded because I, I really didn't even have a clue and uh, so I got kind of dialed in with what they were all about if there's a cap in your area and you're interested in aviation it's not only for just uh, young adults or actually 12 to 18 year olds, but also there's a senior category where you can get involved and uh, and participate and kind of a great little community organization. So I'll be talking more about this in the future, but uh, you know, if you want to participate in search and rescue emergency services, you don't have, you don't have to have a military background whatsoever. All you got to do is have a desire to participate. And one thing that's even cooler about it for the kids, is because they've got over 500 aircraft nationwide, free flight instruction for your teenager. Now, I heard that, and I was like, that kind of set me back, because getting your private pilot license these days is not inexpensive. To, for to someone to solo when they're 16, 17, 18 years old sets them up for life, really. It really does. So... Um, if you've got anyone in your family that's interested in aviation, this is a great gateway uh, into that community and lots of people that are very, very connected. And, you know, it's just amazing what you learn just by going to a dinner. I knew she was participating in this thing, but I didn't really have, you know, this full on recognition of what it was all about. So anyway, that's it. Hey, on the contest that I was running for the suggestion for the video product, um, haven't had time to implement the idea that I want to implement first. Uh, things have just been crazy here. So what I'll probably do is, is, is take the contest out to Friday, and then we'll award someone a, a nice prize. So I'll do that on the, on the Friday show. Apologize I didn't do it today, but uh, that's the case. Hey, make sure you get over to uh, geeknewscenter.com. Check out the free magazine offers on the website. You'll find that in the, in the second and third column of the website. And, of course, we want you to support our sponsors as well. Uh, GoDaddy.com. Domain names, dedicated servers, virtual dedicated servers, shared hosting accounts, really, that's where you go to get online products. And when you're over there and you're getting ready to check out, you'll definitely want to use my promo codes because it's going to save you a lot of cash. And with the way today's economy is and with the way they keep taking more taxes and everything else going on, we need to save every buck possible. And to do so, use my promo code TODD. That'll save you 10% on non-domain orders. Geek 5 will save you 15% on orders $20 or more. Com sale will get you .com renewals at $749 and .com registrations. Todd 20 will get you 20% off on a one-year shared hosting account. That's, again, 20%, Todd 20 So, again, all of my promo codes are on the link to the website. Share it with your friends. 
and uh, make sure that they use my promo codes. It puts dollars in the bank for me and helps me keep the lights on here at the Geek News Central. Hey, as I mentioned, on Saturday we did a roundtable. And for those of you that have upgraded to Windows 7, you have got to see this product called Connectify. If you haven't upgraded to Windows 7, and when you see this demo, you are going to want to upgrade. I am not kidding you. It's my sole reason for upgrading some machines. Now, that there's another story with that I'm going to talk about in a second. <laughs> but um, Connectify.me is the website. If you got a Windows 7 machine, you got to go over there. But check out the demo. The, the, uh, the latest roundtable is posted at techpodcast.com. The link, find a link to it on the main page of the website or go to the blog. Of course, that event is sponsored by GoToMeeting. You'll see how powerful that application is. Hey, you know what I want to talk about how I used GoToMeeting in October. You know, I was traveling a lot, spending a long, lot of time away from home. And there was many days that I was leaving the GoToMeeting session open and I was using it kind of as a virtual office. Team members from Raw Voice were popping into the meeting session at will, basically maybe to show me graphics, uh, show me uh, go over proposals they were getting ready for Blog World, you know, just this plethora of things that were happening all, all at once, partnership agreements. I mean, it was just one thing after the other. And I got to thinking about it here last week, and I thought, man, it was just like, having office hours is when you're nine to five and the doors open and staff's bringing in stuff. Now the raw voice team, we all work independently, but we all share stuff with each other when we're getting ready to do a document approval. And usually that's email back and forth. Boom, 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 boom. You know, you're 25 emails in and you're sick of the topic already. Well, two or three of us could bounce into my open go to meeting session in my virtual office. Cause basically everyone knew the code that I was in during that whole day bop in, we'd look at the document, we'd talk about it right there on the computer, did this right from the hotel room in the voice IP session. Boom, they would get done, they would blast out. Then Jeff would bounce in with something else on the music side, and it was cool. It really, really was. And so if you've ever thought about running a virtual office, or if you have thought about um, having your employee work from home, and you want to be able to have this quick interaction with them, this is that paid the forty nine ninety five the application cost per month right there. Just those two or three days of use where we were in this virtual meeting back and forth. The time saved was remarkable. So if you have ever think about hiring a virtual assistant, you can always be right. And you, don't, you can have a separate computer on the side actually doing it if you're doing it that way. But it was awesome. If you don't want them to see your screen, it was cool. It really, really was. So, hey, you can get a free 30-day trial of GoToMeeting by going to gotomeeting.com forward slash tech podcast. Gotomeeting.com forward slash tech podcast. Think about this thing as a virtual office. Don't think about it as, you know, it's it's just an additional facet of its capability, and it was really cool. So I've talked enough on that, but I just wanted to share with you kind of how we use the app um, um, when I was on travel in October, you know, usually you do the meeting to save you from going on travel, right? But I was on travel and using it more. It was crazy. It was cool. It really was. Okay, let me look at my list here. Uh, yep, 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 yep. I've covered all that. And I think I'm good to go. Let me go ahead and close this window because this thing is acting a fool right now. Like, what's going on, folks? It's just before we started the show tonight. Uh, mouse quit working. So... I went back behind the monitor where it was plugged where it was plugged in, unplugged it from its uh, USB spot, and uh, stretched it over and plugged it into another one. And now it's just like when I move it across the screen, it's not this fluid movement. It's uh, it's choppy. I think I know what I did. I tried to add one more element of <laughs> how should we say it? Uh, one more element of uh, complexity to my what I was going to provide from the screen tonight. I was actually going to try to show my screen on the Ustream stream, and uh, I pushed it a little too hard, so I'm going to get a second monitor, one of those little mini ones that hang off it, and we'll, we'll push from that uh, in the future. Okay, let me go ahead here and get into the content. Um, first thing I want to talk about is a... Um, essentially, it's a study I do every year. And this year, I paid uh, a number of folks. I actually paid a firm 
in the Philippines to run a – basically do some checking for me. Uh, it took every site uh, that received at least – during the podcast awards, all these nominations come in. And some shows get one or two or three nominations. Some get a 1,000. Some get a 100. Uh, what I did is I took every show that received more than 10 nominations – which totaled a total of 2,381 websites across the 22 categories. Uh, some categories have more. Some categories have less. It all depends. Some of them have duplicates in it. It's just it's kind of nuts on how people do nominations. But I sent off that list to my firm in the Philippines, and they've been working for three weeks on this data. They visited every site that was on that list. And they did – the team that's doing the grading, they look at 20 sites. This is a completely separate effort. It's not part of the review process. But the folks from the show that actually reviewed looked at 20 sites. Now, imagine the team there looking at 2,381 sites. Um, so I paid for this separately out of my pocket, and I came up with some stats. And I basically posted a post on my website called The State of the Podcast Sphere Part 1. And – what I found was pretty shocking. In this day and age, uh, when I was as they were going through the websites, they found that 21% of sites had invalid podcast RSS feeds. In other words, the, the RSS feed in itself was completely invalid. 59% had feeds with errors, but basically came up valid. 51% of the sites that they viewed had an RSS icon on their default landing page that was a blog feed only. It wasn't even for their podcast. Um, Another 21% had an RSS icon on their default landing page that was podcast ready. 23% had a podcast RSS feed buried on a subpage in their website. Overall, only 44% of the sites had a podcast RSS feed that they could find that they could subscribe to. And I actually had them subscribe to it in a podcatcher to make sure that it would actually try to download shows. 81% um, though had a visible iTunes subscription icon. 93% had a visible iTunes iTunes subscription icon someplace on their website. Now check this out. 13% of you listen to this show via the Zoom. You have subscribed via the Zoom because I've got a Zoom button on my website. Of those 2,381 sites, only 6%, only 6% had a Zoom marketplace icon on their website. Just completely blew me away. 43% had a visible email contact, 14% had a newsletter sign-up page, 11% um, had a call-in number. Now check this out, though. 88% of the sites had good, unique branding. That's a complete increase from the years before. 59% had less than one paragraph of show notes for their past five podcasts. How do they expect Google to find them? 51% had a physical download link. 71% were creating audio only. Now check this out, 71% were creating audio only, 9% were creating video only, 20% were creating audio and video, and what really blew me away, only 23% of the podcasters were blogging as well as doing video and audio, pod, uh, uh, video, audio and video content. Um, no, excuse me, 19, 23% number of uh, podcasters were blogging as well as some form of podcasting content. And then, yeah, 23, then 19% recurring audio, video, and blog post. But check this out. 66% 60 of the total nominations, in other words, the ones that actually made the nomination list, were shows creating audio, video, and blog posts. That has to tell people something. It has to tell them that if they're blogging, they're doing audio, and they're doing video, they have a much more higher chance of getting traction on their shows Sadly, only 3% of the sites were, are mobile-ready, and I'm even guilty of that. Geek News Central is not mobile-ready. 37% uh, did not have their shows listed on Blueberry. 51% didn't have their shows listed on Podcast Alley. 14% did not have their shows listed on Podcast.com. And 41, But 41% but had a Twitter link on their website. 53% had a Facebook link on their website. But the whole thing about people, you know, people just seem to think that people only consume media on their, on their iPhone. And I'm pretty adamant. I don't understand why these these folks just don't get it. It's like they they don't have a clue. And um, it's amazing. I, I guess podcasters don't understand that there are hundreds of devices that can't sync to iTunes. 
you know, five years into this and they're still seeing this crap, it just it just blows me away. Now, to top it off, the the comments on the website were pretty good. But you should have seen the hate mail, the hate mail that I have gotten over this article. I have been called every name in the book that can be considered. Who are you to judge? Who do you know to what to talk about? You know, calling me, you know, <laughs> do I come across as arrogant on this article? Isn't this just stats? You know, I, 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 I'm really, I'm pretty amazed. I'm pretty amazed at the response. First of all, they didn't have the guts to leave a comment on the blog. Instead, they have to attack me via email. You know who you are. You're listening. Well, I'm sorry. You don't like the data. Just go somewhere else. But, wow. I just, you know, you don't know how much money I spent to do this. But I do this every year because I want to know. So, what do you guys think? Love to hear your feedback on this. Please, please, please go over to geekinthecentral.com and read this. Retweet it. Blog it. Blog a link to it. Again, this data has nothing to do with how Podcast Awards voting slate was derived, okay? That was done by listeners of this show. This data was uh, essentially um, put together by a team of folks in the Philippines. And I couldn't afford it to have done some U.S. company to do it because the, the team in the Philippines, I played a flat rate. I don't know if they'll do it another year, but <laughs> they did it this year. All right, I'm going to start uh, the tech news out with uh, two articles that I have seen that I don't necessarily agree with the first article in its um, assessment. It was over on TechCrunch, and it was a basically a birdie bat uh, as a blast on citizen journalists and how they can't handle the truth. And it was a talk about what was going on at, in Fort Hood and how some individual was actually um, twittering uh, while news was still breaking on what was going out there. What I the article itself, I mean, kind of okay. I take, what it is, what it is, by this guy by the name of Paul Carr. But you know, irregardless, if someone was a little irresponsible doing Twitter posts, that's usually not the case. Usually, the the, the citizen journalist is right on the money, and the individual that was doing some stuff was probably a little insensitive, and probably will end up getting in trouble by the military. I would imagine. I can't imagine them not. Uh, considering they were taking pictures in a hospital and the whole privacy right and all that stuff. It's going to be ugly for that individual. But what I want you to pay attention to on this article, and I mean, you've got to go see it, is the video that is entitled This American Life. It's, it's on YouTube, but I have the link up to the show notes on the TechCrunch, and you've got to watch this video. I want to hear your comments. Send me comments at geeknews at gmail.com on this particular video. Tell me what you think. And, of course, you can uh, call in at 619-342-7365 and leave your comments on that as well. Okay, the second one is another video I want you to watch. And this was over actually uh, – uh-oh, did I lose it? Oh, no. No, I've got it. It's over on Gizmodo. And it's called Trillions. The history of computer – the history of computing video shows why we are doomed. This is a completely separate uh, subject talks about how right now we've got a billion people on the internet but this video goes into what's going to happen when we have trillions of devices on the internet which we're not too far away from and what I want you guys to uh, compare and contrast the first video was about a citizen journalism and you know what's maybe coming and then the second one is about where we're headed in in the tech field and in in the our online world and this will blow your mind if it doesn't, if I don't get any comments off this, then I might as well quit doing the show. But I want you guys to watch both of those and, and email me. And, of course, call the voicemail hotline and, and give me your guys' thoughts on these. So I have these linked up first two things in the actual show notes tonight. All right, those of you down under, sorry. I guess you guys got the first iPhone worm. Did you get Rick rolled? <laughs> well, some dude down in Australia put together a hack that would basically change your wallpaper on your iPhone and change it from whatever you had to a Rickroll. So uh, this is the, apparently the first ever iPhone worm, and it's currently infecting the 
uh, jailbroken iPhones down in Australia. And the, the worm is called the icky worm because it takes advantage of the fact that jailbroken phones, iPhones with SSH installs, all have some same default password of Alpine. So make sure you change your default password. Uh, but anyway, this will be up in the show notes. And uh, did you get Rick rolled yet on your iPhone? <laughs> Okay, let's talk a little bit about Snow Leopard. If you uh, have had your Mac turned on today, like I turned mine on here uh, just before the show, immediately said you need to download this huge update. Oh, my goodness. It was like 500 megs. It fixes a huge number of bugs. This is the largest bug release that Apple has had in over a year. Of over 40 um, it provides about 20 fixes for the general operating system, fonts, graphics, mail fixes, a mobile me fixes, network file system fixes. Maybe now I'll be able to see my other computers on the network. Um, Safari fixes, you name it. Uh, and it, it took forever. It took forever. I started, download didn't take forever. But the update of the machine, it just sat there and churn and in churn and in churn and in churn. And in -churn. I was like, come on. I got to start the show, and it was finally it uh, it uh, it it rebooted and was ready to go. But uh, um, yeah, huge number. So if you haven't upgraded your Mac, you're going to get a huge download here tonight or tomorrow next time you check for updates. Next article is over on GigaOM, and I have to just kind of laugh at this one here because it really should set you back and think. How many of you are talking with your parents? on Skype now as a primary communication vehicle. How many of you are getting your kids to call grandma on Skype? Or as a friend of mine's wife calls it, Skippy? <laughs> um, how many of you are doing that? Well, the article over in GigaOM is saying that with the U.S. carrier trend going down, even the wireless uh, carrier trend going down, and voice IP stuff going up, um, even though we're cutting our wired lines, they're actually starting to see a, 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 a decline in mobile usage, specific type of mobile usage. And, of course, the, uh, the voice is going mostly over the Internet. Now, data on mobile phones is, you know, straight up. But the actual voice capabilities is actually on a decline. So uh, this article basically goes into this guy that uh, talks to his dad all the time on a cell phone. And he was talking about his grandkids. Are talking about the grandchildren, and uh, you know the father said, "Hey, hang this thing up, load Skype up. I want to talk and see the kids." Um, I think that's kind of a trend that we're going to see. Grandma and Grandpa don't want to see; they don't want to just talk. They want to see now, right? So, where's this going? Is this going to? I don't know my kids to call Grandma on Skype, um, especially overseas. The uh, the relatives in Japan. All the time on Skype. Matter of fact, it's on my wife's computer and the camera's like permanently fixed to a spot where <laughs> grandma can see the kids whenever she wants to from Japan. So uh, I think Skype is, uh, you know, if nothing else. It's going to be the video chat uh, application of choice for the, for the very near future. Now, Google bought a company today. They're going to try to compete with Skype. And uh, that was in the news. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Hey, over in Clearwire. They're looking for 1.5, another 1.5 billion dollars uh, infusion of cash. I went to the Sprint store here in Honolulu. Uh, what night was it? Friday, and uh, popped in there and said, "Hey, I, I want to pick up a 3G slash 4G card." And the lady looked at me like I was talking Greek, and she says, "Uh, we got a 3G card." And I'm like, "Do you know what's going on with 4G?" And she kind of shook her head. And I, Looked at the the other guy, and he kind of shrugged, and I'm like, this is not a good sign. When store staff have not a clue that 4G is coming to Honolulu. I said, well, can you bring it up on the online? And she brought it up online, and I said, do you have that? And I pointed to the, um, to the, to the uh, wireless device that I wanted, and she looked in her stock. Nope, we don't have it. I said, when are you going to get them? And she says, it's not saying. And I'm like, well, I heard some of 4G's turned on here in Hawaii. Can I get you know, order this, and she didn't know. So essentially I went online with Sprint today and I ordered my new card. It'll be in midweek. But <laughs> Sprint is in for, for everything now. They have essentially bet the farm. They're going to have to lay up about another billion dollars in cash for Clearwire to do some more of this rollout. 
But Clearwire's got to get busy. They got to get Clear launched. They got to get this 4G network up. They got to get it going. Hey, I'm standing here with my wallet open, ready to pay. And uh, I know a lot of other people are. We're pretty excited about this. The only challenge that we're going to have is that the clear signal is going to be in like the 2500 megahertz uh, spectrum, whereas the Verizon LTE is going to be in the 900 range. The 900 range has a much better wall penetration. Um, I think if anything else, that's where the probably will be the challenge with clear is they're operating at a higher frequency range. So it will be interesting to see how well these things um, pierce not only wooden structures, which, you know, I think uh, clear will probably do okay in sprint as well. But I think that uh, clear and sprint will have a challenge when it comes to concrete structures. So um, that'll be the true test. And I have a place where I go quite often where I'm in a building. I'm on like an interior wall where um, today my Verizon signal is terrible, but I can get Sprint. Now we'll see what happens when LTE uh, comes online and uh, who's the winner there. But uh, $1.5 billion is what Clear needs. Hey, you know, this is, you know, it's funny here. Some people love the droid. Some people hate the droid. Scoble says the droid fails as a product when compared to the Palm Pre or iPhone. And Dave Weiner says, I love the droid. And it, it's amazing how you have two really sophisticated tech geeks and how they can have such a complete different view on a phone based upon how they use it. So everyone's saying the droid screen is rocks. They're saying, though, that the droid itself in its basically in how it's been constructed is a little bit left to desire. Um, primarily, Scoble said that the uh, battery cover was popping off after a day of use, and that was annoying. That would be annoying. A brand new phone in the, in the you know, that just is total lack of quality control. But uh, being able to multitask on the Android versus the iPhone where you cannot, in other words, run more than one app. So... Uh, they say, of course, Scoble says great things about the Verizon speed and the voice quality, but then he goes into this whole, whole lack of, you know, bashing the thing and uh, complaining about how it won't do high res video, uh, how it doesn't have very many, how the apps that are like for Facebook and so forth, they're much lower quality. So, anyway, I think it depends on what your use is, on what's going to, on how you're going to like it, but I'll have a compare and contrast. Uh, Robert's article up in the show notes and of course Dave's as well and uh, those of you that are sitting on the fence and waiting to get a droid or haven't played with one yet um, will definitely have uh, you get some you know there's 100 reviews out there but it's kind of cool to get the geeky guys that are using this thing for geeky things to find out uh, where the real comparison lays in some true real world uh, utilization All right, over on Robin Good's website um, hey Professional Video Editing Software Comparison Guide to the Best Video Editors. This is a, this is a pretty good article by Robin Good. And uh, there, I learned some things with this too. And he overviews um, Avid Media Composer, Final Cut Pro 7, Adobe Premiere Pro CS4, Avid Liquid Pro 7, Sony Vegas Movie Studio 9 Premium. And I don't know if I consider Sony Vegas a premium video editing application, but... He, he, he uh, includes it here. Uh, Sorensen Media Squeeze 6. Uh, and then goes into basically different comparisons. Uh, how it uh, input formats, output formats. Uh, whether it has AVCH, AVHCD format. In other words, will it support the Sony webcams? They're doing digital recording. Talk about FLV input support. So, there, I tell you, Adobe Premiere, the more I look at... Adobe Premiere and, and the features Adobe Premiere can do, it really makes me sit back and go, hmm, um, it really, really does. The only bad thing is with Adobe Premiere, uh, no, you know, no MOV format or MP4 output, uh, which is really too bad. But, uh, you know, it's just one of those licensing things. So anyway, link will be up in the show notes. You guys can check it out. Okay. 50 state views of Street View. I said that uh, today that Google announced uh, Street View for Hawaii. I've got three, two links will be in the actual show notes. will be up on the blog. And the third one 
Well, again, I said the will be a link to the uh, Hacienda here in uh, Honolulu of Geek New Central. And a pretty good uh, street view. Now, you guys will be able to find it if you figure out what my address is, which is not too hard to figure out if you're knowing where to look on my website. But uh, anyway, I'll have this link up and give you guys the direct link to it so that you guys can go check it out, okay? Um, Microsoft Bing is giving free Wi-Fi use in JWire hotspots. So if you get someplace around an air terminal, you're out in town at a coffee shop, and they have J JI wire access, you'll definitely want to bounce right into that bad boy because what, what you already got to do is you get free Wi-Fi by simply doing a search on Microsoft Bing, opens up, lets you surf the net for free. So you get a little exposure to Bing and at the same time get some free Wi-Fi access. So good job by the folks at, uh, at Microsoft. Okay, let me go ahead here and uh, this next article has been kind of brewing with me or this next subject's been brewing with me all weekend. The statement that came out by Robert Murdoch, Rupert Murdoch, excuse me, that uh, they're essentially going to cut Google off. He's thinking about cutting Google off in that he's not going to let Google index any of their news websites, Fox, any of the properties that Robert Murdoch uh, essentially controls. And the response by Google was, okay, if they want to block us, so be it. It's the publisher's choice. You know, we will, we will remove them from the index if that is so what they want. But Mark Cuban makes a comment here that made me sit back and think a little bit. It says, Robert Mur Murdoch to block Google equals smart equals Twitter has changed it all. And I got to thinking about this, and I don't know if I necessarily 100% agree, but Mark is saying that Twitter is changing the way we find news and that real life streaming information about what's going on the net is coming through Twitter much faster it is than regular news organizations and that uh, Twitter is probably the biggest threat to Google of any um, service that's in existence right now and I have to admit if you have a refined Twitter list you get basically kind of rid of the folks that are always talking about walking their dog um, then you can actually find a lot of good information in the Twitter stream as long as you can keep up. My problem is I walk away from it from three hours and the custom streams I've set up, there's already 2,000 Twitters. And then how can I go back and, you know, cull all that data out? As soon as someone figures out how to build list, that then they can derive link popularity from and or else you can submit your own list and it produces you kind of a rack and stack of what everyone's talking about that my friends will make someone a lot of money um, i could replace newsreader google reader um, if i had the ability to really be able to sort those trends out on the follow list that i have so designated um, those lists have become very val valuable to set up right now they're public there's no way you really can hide a list that you've set up, which is good. But, uh, you know, the list Scoble came up with, which was pretty awesome, but I saw so much repeat stuff there um, that I really didn't want to, you know, have to click through. Um, well, I knew it was duplicate, so it was kind of a waste of my time. But uh, as soon as someone calls that data out, it'll be good. The temperature here in the studio tonight is about 90. The trades have... Uh, slow down and I'm not getting any breeze and it's warm in here <laughs> very very warm um, big news out of Google today and they have uh, purchased AdMob for 750 million dollars in stock this is a this is a big bet on mobile advertising and I think we've all seen it on our mobile phones different apps are running we're seeing uh, advertising well I'm gonna be powered by Google uh, this is uh, this is not a surprise purchase. Uh, the, everyone kind of thought that AdMob was going to be, uh, you know, its biggest target acquisition, but it was by Google. There was a rumor there for a little while that Apple may be, 
Now, the folks at AdMob were getting ready to raise another $50 million in cash to uh, go for an initial public offering next year, but uh, they don't have to. They're part of the Google family now. Uh, Google acquired them and paid it all in stock. Uh, so a nice little purchase by Google. We'll see what happens here. Uh, Google's getting serious on mobile, and uh, as the rest of us uh, need to be in an R. The kind of cool article out of uh, New York Times. Sony's going to be offering film, a.k.a. films, on the Internet, TV, then DVD. This is a, this is a change. Remember last week we were talking about how the um, through control of what's going to be pushed onto our DVR that they were going to delay first-run movies or some um, – uh, movie houses were going to be not movie houses, but you know Universal and those kind of folks. They were going to delay the availability of movies on your television until after the DVD was released. I think this is smart by Sony. Sony's going to offer film on the internet, TV, then DVD. So the DVD will be the last release. Wouldn't it make sense if they're going to have a flop? If no one's going to buy it on TV, why do you print the DVD? You know, why do you put out a million DVDs? Maybe you put out 100,000 instead of a million. Um, might be smart by them. Now, it's not necessarily going to be cheap to get the film on the Internet. Uh, they say they're going to, you know, it'll be around the same, you know, they're going to have a, a different pricing structure because they're going to try to make it around the same price as what you would pay for a DVD. So, you know, I don't know if that's smart. Give me a discount. Fourteen ninety five, twelve ninety five, eleven ninety five, and let me buy it and download it, and burn my own DVD, instead of paying twenty four ninety five at the retailer at Walmart or someplace like that. So uh, keep you advised. We'll see what happens with Sony if this uh, if this strategy pans out. All right, over on Mobile Crunch, ten apps that all new Android users should check out. So those of you that have a Droid or any other Android phone, we've got a list here of some pretty cool apps you need to check out. And I'd uh, like to hear from the Android users, the Droid users, what your favorite apps are. And uh, be it's simply because we hear everything about the iPhone. We hear about apps every day about the iPhone. We need to hear about some apps on the Android. So if you're a, if you're a Droid user, I want to hear from you. Geeknews at gmail.com, voicemail hotline, plus one. 619-342-7365. All right, over on Ars Technica, we talked about the data breach notification legislation in progress last week. It is a step closer to law. Uh, Senate Bill 139 is uh, progressing, but one thing that they're stating here, that they're not real happy about this data, basically uh, Senate Bill 139 will require companies to notify us if our credit card data is breached. In other words, if there's someone gets out of a computer that someone's got all our credit card numbers on and so forth, they don't have a time frame listed. They don't say 90 days, 60 days, 30 days, two weeks, 24 hours, nothing like that. The bill says they should be made without unreasonable delay. Now, if I'm a company CEO, Sarah, what's an unreasonable delay? Hey, a year? <laughs> and what's you know what's to say they they're not going to get in trouble? Oh man! And of course the Senate, the second bill, the Personal Data Privacy and Security Act, Senate Bill 1490, which is uh, largely focused on punishing entities for not disclosing data breaches. This goes on to say this bill states that anyone with knowledge of a security breach who is not exempt cannot conceal that information without a fine. How do you know if you're exempt? Who do they exempt? Banks? The Federal Reserve, the U.S. government, who's exempt? Doesn't that sound like a get-out-of-jail-free card for somebody? Be exempt and not have to report a security breach? Boy, I, they put some fancy language in these bills. And you know what? These these congressional reps start needing to, do, need to do in their jobs and protecting consumers. It's just amazing. All right, Firefox has turned five. And, uh, wow, what a road we've come down. But today, sadly, as well, there was an article out saying that Firefox in the first half of 2009 
had more security issues than all the other browsers out there, which disappoints me. There is a little bit of a theory behind that. They're saying that because Firefox has such a wide base of plugins now, um, that it's really causing Firefox to be more uh, security prone. So if you're running a whole bunch of plugins, um, you know, be careful and make sure you get them from reputable sources. I know that Firefox is trying to, you know, do a, a verification of plugins to make sure that um, you're getting something that isn't just re really loaded with malware. Uh, you know, just don't download something that someone recommends. Make sure you go look at the reviews on on, on the Mozilla website. Boy, I'm going to run long tonight. I can see it already. Um, so anyway, we'll have both of those articles up. Hey, information out of the BBC. Hey, those of you in the UK, oh my goodness. You guys thought you had enough cameras in the country? Well, the Home Office is saying it will push ahead with plans to ask communication firms to monitor all Internet use. Ministers confirmed their intention, despite concerns and opposition from some in the industry, asking firms to retain information on how people use social networks, such as Facebook. Wow. Both the police and secret, ser uh, secret security services have legal powers in the UK to intercept communications in the interest of combating crime or threats to national security. But the rules largely focus on communications over telephones, and this change will require communication service providers, ISPs, to collect and retain records of communications from a wider range of Internet sources, social networks, chat rooms, unorthodox methods such as online games. Yeah. Okay. They're going to monitor online games. Oh, my goodness. Are we are we fast approaching a police state? My goodness. All right. Microsoft defends Windows 7 security after the Surface test. Last show, we talked about how um, there was a report out that Windows 7 user account control was easily and was very ineffective at fighting malware. The folks over at Microsoft came out swinging and um, basically saying, hey, this, these results are incorrect. Uh, we don't agree with the testing. Uh, basically, fighting words. And uh, the folks over at Sophos uh, get a little bit of egg on their face. Uh, they're not real happy with Microsoft's uh, very aggressive attack against them. I'll let you guys uh, read the full context of this article. Um, but the folks at Sophos are, I guess, apologizing for sensationalizing the issue when it was not necessarily meant to be sensational, just stating a few things that they found. So I'll have the link to this in the show notes. All right, over on Slashdot. How many of you live in uh, New Jersey? How would you like to have a dome over your city? Oh, this is not in New Jersey. It's in Vermont. A Vermont city of 7,000 res residents they paid, uh, who paid over $4 million a year in heating bills have asked the HUD, I guess that's a Housing and Urban Development, to consider funding a proposal where they would put a dome that was kept up by air pressure uh, basically uh, over the top of the city. There will be no more heating bills, fly fishing all year, no more snow shoveling. And to this day, the former city planners insist that's a, economically a slam dunk. Who wants a dome over their house? I'm sorry, I want to be able to see the sky. Can you imagine? Can you imagine even residents even considering that? You know what would happen. They'd get that dome up, and some kids would figure out how to burn that thing down. <laughs> Or they would be shooting their guns through it or something, you know, tearing holes in the thing. The thing went last a week. <laughs> oh. All right, researchers neutralized Parkinson dopamine killers. Now, this is big. Uh, Iowa State researchers have made a breakthrough that could eventually lead a, to a cure for Parkinson's. And any of you that have family members that know someone with Parkinson's, you know how devastating this is. They've identified the protein that kills the dopamine-producing cells in the brain and has allowed the researchers to disable it and could be the first step in develop a new treatment. Um, this, is, this is big. Big, 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 big. So we'll see how long this takes to uh, reach something in the market. But uh, for all of you that are, you know, have um, 
uh, markers for Parkinson's and so forth. This is huge. All right, Phoenix lander spotted from orbit. The NASA Mars Phoenix lander, whose mission ended almost a year ago, uh, I guess has been spotted in images taken in recent month by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. Now, here's the exciting thing. This thing is it's been winter on Mars, where the the Mar the Mars Phoenix lander's been, and as early as uh, this winter, and uh, they're going to try. And uh, in early 2010, to wake the uh, reconnaissance, excuse me, the Phoenix lander up. It's been in a deep freeze, and uh, they're going to try to communicate with it here as soon as spring returns to Mars and the landing site. So this is, uh, we'll see, we'll see how good uh, NASA is. They think it's very, probably the, the chances are very low. But, you know, I think it would be cool if they could wake this thing up. And uh, I don't know if the batteries will have exploded, if it's gotten too cold. Who knows? But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens with this. But uh, wouldn't it be cool if they were able to wake it up? A few more uh, space junk issues close to the International Space Station. Uh, some debris close to, uh, within 500 meters. Uh, crew was almost ordered into the, uh, into the Soyuz capsule, but they didn't have to do that. But this is like the second time in, in recent days where they've had uh, close calls by space debris. I think it's just a matter of time before they get whacked, sadly. There's so much junk up there. All right, how many of you go to Panera Bread quite a bit? How many of you use their Wi-Fi while you're there? We don't have a Panera Bread here. There's none in Hawaii. So if you're Panera Bread, you, you know, you like Panera Bread and you come to Hawaii, sorry. No Panera Bread here. But uh, in the mainland, the lower 48... Uh, if you go to Panera Bread and use their Wi-Fi and you try to uh, put something up on Twitter using a bit.ly link, uh, they block it. Uh, they have basically uh, banned uh, any short, shorty URLs being posted via their Wi-Fi application saying that they're, they don't want to be responsible for hidden links going to rogue sites and so forth. They're a family establishment, but you know, don't they know that bit.ly's already put in some malware protection for users? I don't fully get their their uh, their thought process on this, but anyway, that's what they've uh, put in place. Uh, what else have we got here? Got a couple of last things for you. The AT and T has introduced the USB Connect. It's a 7.2 megabits per second service, and it's an upgrade uh, to their network that's being rolled out slowly. So if you're an AT and T user and you want to pick up, um, if you're in Chicago, Charlotte. Dallas, Houston, or Los Angeles, and Miami. They're expected to have the the new service up and available by the end of the year. So you want to pick up a new uh, 7.2 megas per second uh, dongle card, and available uh, after, con after or available uh, on November 22nd for free after re rebate on contract. So again, just in time for the launches in those cities that I mentioned. Uh, over at Radio Shack, I know everyone goes to the Shack, right? <laughs> I don't care. If you're a geek, you go to the shack. They always have the connector you need or so forth. But how many, you know, I don't even know if I want to talk about this. HD radio. How many of you have got an HD radio in your car? I'm hearing crickets. Do you have an HD radio in your car? If you do, please email us. I'd like to know <laughs> if anybody actually does. The folks at GigaWare have launched a device that plugs into your iPhone then plugs into the cigarette lighter of your car, but which give you inline control with HD radio for your iPhone for $79.99. Now I know, if you're listening to this show, you're listening to podcasts. You're not listening to terrestrial radio. You're not listening to, you know, the talk shows and everything. You're listening to this talk show. <laughs> but if you're so inclined to pick up an HD radio for your grandfather or, or your mom, not, not for you, right? Seventy nine ninety nine available at the shack. Google's uh, looks like they're getting ready to roll a huge number of improvements to all of their apps. There's been some leakage from someone within Google showing some screenshots of uh, some of the new uh, layouts of G Gmail and other uh, applications. So uh, I have a link up to that in the show notes. This article that's up on uh, Engadget. All right, over on the register. Bot herders, hey, you know they're smart. You know they're gonna, they're they're like, you know they're they're like moving targets. They're always trying to uh, stay away from uh, folks who are gonna shut them down. But uh, bots have been hiding master control channels in Google's cloud, 
And uh, so they've been using Google's app engine to act as master control for their large number of bot networks uh, controlling uh, infected computers. And uh, so it's been found, been struck down, but it's just like one of these ongoing moving targets that uh, continues to evolve. Uh, you know, you think they'd be able to shut that bot traffic down right at the switch level. Over on Discovery, you guys go to discovery.com. Well, there's now a new two, two new websites at Discovery News. They have released a tech and science channel. So uh, if you're a Discovery fan, definitely want to go over there and, and check that out. All right, we're at the end of regular content tonight. I do have uh, several voicemails for you. I want to thank those of you that have called in and left a comment. If you have a comment on tonight's show, plus one, six, one, nine, three, four, two, seven, three, six, five. We'll get right in here to the first comment, and then I'll get into the emails after that. And we'll get you guys out of here. Uh, but again, thanks for uh, hanging out for this part of the show. Geeknews at gmail.com, voicemail hotline, plus one, six, one, nine, three, four, two, seven, three, six, five. Here comes the first uh, audio comment. Hi, Todd. It's Joey Smith in Atlanta, Georgia. Hey, Joey. I just want to take a minute. You said you haven't had any voicemails lately, so I yeah. thought I'd call and, and leave you one. Hey, thanks. I'm not sure if you get in time for the next episode or not. Uh, but anyway, just want to call and say hi. Thanks for the show. Also, got a question. Do you ever really relent? Not that I'm a big user of it or anything, but I've, I've started just reading a little bit more. And I've heard you mention it a time or two, I believe. Um, but I was just wondering what your, your use of Linux has been. Anyway, thanks for the show. Bye-bye. Hey, Joey, you know something? It, I have um, 24 hours in a day, and right now about 18 of them are consumed with building a business, running a huge podcast, I guess what you'd call it, network slash empire, keeping advertisers happy. Uh, I have barely enough time to uh, to take a shower. <laughs> No, I it's uh I I play around with Linux from time to time. It's definitely not on my priority list. I do uh, I do have a machine that I can do a boot into uh, that I play around with, but I just I just don't find a lot of time. And I wish I did, but as we progress and I get more help and more stuff is taken off my shoulders, uh, I should be able to. And that's one of the reasons why I like this year. I want to get help to do the CES videos. Normally I do them, and last year we had uh, a little help with the videos. But this year, I just I got to outsource all of it. I got to have someone else do the editing. I just do not have the time to do it. And I know we're going to find some great people in this audience uh, to help us out and uh, and 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 step up the plate and want to be editors for our content. You know, and get some probably probably work a deal. I'll have to see how maybe I just give the hard drives that they're sent. We'll, they'll be able to keep or something. I'll do something cool to help. Uh, Add a little uh, icing on the cake for those that are doing video editing. All right, here's the next uh, next voicemail. Hey, Todd, this is uh, Mark Schneider again from hey. uh, Lomar, California. Hey, Mark. I just completed my third upgrade to uh, Windows 7, and, and the last time you asked how long it took, uh, the first clean install took uh, about 20 minutes. went real quickly because I had formatted my C drive. second one I did was a in-place upgrade. I needed to do because I didn't want to mess with uh, some files I was working on at the time. So uh, I just cloned my hard drive and did it in place. It took about two and a half hours, and I had to uninstall iTunes and Nod32 and a few other programs and then reinstall them. But it worked great, and uh, the in-place upgrade is actually a nice way to go. It uh, is a lot better than I thought. Um, the last one I did was on a netbook. And it was running XP, so I had to do a clean install on that as well. Uh, I was able to use the uh, external DVD uh, player to do it. It worked fine. Uh, it took about 30 minutes, I'd say, a little bit longer because of the slower processor and, and hard drive stuff. But otherwise, you know, it went real smooth. It runs great on all three machines, and uh, so far I'm very satisfied. So thank you. Uh, keep up the good work. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for the call, and thanks for the uh, thanks for the uh, update on Windows 7. I'll tell you what happened to me. I've got here a copy of Windows 7 Professional. And to my right, I have a HP laptop. And if I press the uh, little button to start, and I go up here to the and right-click on computer, and I go Properties, and I read what it says there. 
I'm running on Windows Vista Home Premium. And I have a copy of Windows 7 Professional. Uh, my Windows Home Premium is 64-bit operating system. My Windows 7 Professional would not upgrade. Oh, I was a knucklehead. I bought the wrong copy for this machine. So I'm sitting here trying to figure out, okay, I've got to go back and buy another copy of Windows 7 at a non-discounted rate. Doggone it. <laughs> You know, it never fails. It never fails. You know, you you do your best planning, and it, it told me, oh yeah, you can uh, you can slick your machine and upgrade to Windows Seven. I got stuff on this computer. I don't want to slick it. So yeah, you know, <laughs> you got to buy the right upgrade product, folks. Make sure you get them matched. Okay, uh, it oh it was good for Windows Seven, but uh, so I got to break the other machine out. Probably got the same issue. So it is what it is. All right, this next voicemail is uh, from a listener that calls quite often from Vegas. I have to um, cut out part of his voicemail comment because he goes into some personal stuff. But I want you guys to um, help me out here, those of you that are Mac users. So we've, we've got a little bit of a, of a concern. He wants a question answered. So Mac users, listen up. Here it comes. Hey, Todd, this is Vince again. Hey man, how you been doing? I'm doing good. Enjoying. I got your download today. Hey man, but I was uh, uh, looking at some stuff about security for my new Mac, you know. Yeah. And I ran across, I think it's pronounced Orbicules Undercover, and they have one for like iPhone and the Mac. And I uh, subscri subscribe to the uh, Mobile Me. Uh, because one thing that interests me is that they could find your iPhone. Hey, uh, man, I was wondering, is that the most important? I mean, is that the best uh, that they have going? You know, because after spending $2,500 on a Mac, you know, um, 50 bucks is kind of cheap. You know, I don't mind that at all, but they got us working over there at the... Uh, all right, V, I think the, cut it off right there in time. I don't think that uh, most Mac users use any security software, to be honest with you. Uh, if they do, I don't know what they're using. So Mac users, let me know. And uh, what do you guys think about the the uh, the app that, uh, that Vince is uh, thinking about running? Um, love to hear your feedback on that. Uh, geeknews at gmail.com. Yeah, or you guys can call it into the voicemail hotline. At plus one six one nine three four two seven three six five. All right, let me go ahead and get into the email comments, and we'll get everyone out of here. Dave sent me an email. He said, "Here's more information about the sixty minutes news story that aired last night, sabotaging the system." It talks about computer hackers may now have the power to take down the country's critical infrastructure, such as utility systems, banking systems, and maybe military systems. And there's a link to this information uh, via the CBS News website. Dave, I didn't see this particular um, story. Um, I know that they had one a couple of weeks ago that really was portraying the RIAA kind of in a positive way. But uh, this is a this is a new one, and I'll see if I can get some more research on this. But uh, we'll have the link up in the show notes for those of you that uh, that want to check it out. Hey, Bree, this is this is totally funny. All right, everyone, pick up their phones. Okay, got to do this for me. Flip open the lid, or if it's an iPhone, put the uh, receiver right close to your mouth. Now, I'm just going to simulate here. <coughs> Did you know that uh, you can cough in your mobile phone for instant diagnosis? Yes, your mobile phone may soon be able to diagnose respiratory illnesses in seconds when you cough into it. Article on telegraph.co.uk has got the, uh, the article about how we're going to be able to cough into our phones to uh, essentially, uh, probably, at some point, get a doctor to write us a script. So uh, that ought to be interesting. There'll be out there people that'll be fake coughing into their phones just to abuse the pharmacy system. But anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, anyway, you'll get, a, you'll get your diagnosis. Then you can go see your doctor and tell them what's wrong. And I'm sure they'll 
You know, don't doctors hate that when you tell them, I think this is what's wrong with me, Doc. I found that information over on YouTube. <laughs> All right, uh, got an article, or actually a link from uh, Trucker Tom talking about uh, Robert Rupert. Mur Why don't I want to say Robert Rupert Murdoch's uh, uh, big lofty statement about uh, pulling his listings from uh, Google. Have that link up in the show notes. Got an email from Greg. He said, "Hey, Todd, you may enjoy this as much as I like. Looks cool enough that I'd like to see in a high def TV. It's a video over on Vimeo, and I did agree. Very cool time lapse photography, Greg. I'll have this up in the show notes." Got an email from um, a from well, this is kind of interesting. It, oh, oh, okay. Hub sent me a, a link, and it's a um, you guys know that I have got uh, light panels here in the studio now, right? Well, Hub is my dealer here in Hawaii, and he sent me a link to a one by one under. He's using a one by one light panel. They're using a one 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 by one light panel. In under, underwater video shooting. So I have this link up in the show notes. You guys can check that out. Got an email from Timothy on Greenfields. They say, Todd, a friend of mine back in India asked me to check out this company. It sounds pretty interesting. Not exactly the tech stuff you talk about, but it may find it answering after all. We all need fuel. It talks about global change and biofuel solutions. And did I already go over this one? Yeah, I think I did. So anyway, that's all the email for tonight, folks. Geeknews at gmail.com on your comments. Remember, those two, verse, those two videos... That I'm going to link to in the in the beginning of the show notes that I want you to go look at. Love to hear you guys' thoughts on that. And if it doesn't blow your mind as much or make you think, maybe it won't blow your mind, but it should make you think a little bit about what's going on in today's world and where we may be headed on the trillions of internet devices and also the essentially this this first video. I'm not going to give away. You just got to watch it. Love to hear your feedback on those again. And it's so it's so true, so 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 true. Those both of those videos, it's kind of makes you go, "Ooh, wow!" At least in my opinion. So, okay, still uh, no uh, no travel plans. I'm here in Honolulu, and for those of you that are veterans out there or serving in the military today, uh, going to have Happy Veterans Day on uh, on Wednesday. And uh, for those of you that have a veteran in your family, don't forget to to say thank you. And uh, remember that the veterans uh, cemeteries are going to be putting up American flags. And if you have a Boy Scout, make sure he gets out there and helps up put flags in the national cemeteries. And, uh, you know, uh, basically, you know, thank a veteran on Wednesday. Uh, I would definitely appreciate it. But uh, we'll see you here on Friday, folks. And um, same time, same place. Uh, in your iPod, uh, on your screen, wherever, however you want to consume us, it's, uh, it's easy to do. Come on over to geeknewscentral.com. Check out all the great content. Lots of great blog articles right now. The team, the blogging team, going crazy. Right, writing lots of great stuff. If you're not coming over to Geek News Central and looking at the content on the website, man, you're missing out because the team has been just boom, 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 daily, hitting on all cylinders. Lots of good stuff up there. Love to hear some feedback, too, on my state of the podcast sphere. Uh, what you think about the trends and what we've seen on those 2,318 sites that uh, my team in uh, the Philippines looked at. So lots of stuff for you guys to, to comprehend over the next couple of days. Until next time, everyone take care. And thanks, Rohana, for being here. You guys are what it's all about. Aloha.